Hey y'all, hope everybody's doing well as you can. Y'all's not gonna woods. My name is Josh, his name is Jake, or Jakey. <laughs> and today I'm gonna do like a bunch of little, mainly I was gonna do my gardening, but when the little ones are like, I wanna go fishing, we gotta go fishing. So we're gonna fish for a little bit. Yeah. And uh, before I gotta go work on my beds and stuff. Come here, see me, see me, see me. You like fishing? What's that? So, I thought I'd take you along. I don't know if you remember my previous videos when I'm we were out here fishing. Remember, this was all frozen and thick, and can't tell, but probably all the way at the end of the pond, there's probably like a, I don't know, like a 50 foot circle of ice left, and that's it. So it's a little higher than normal, too. The water should be on down a little bit just because of the you know, influx of uh, snow melt. But uh, we're going to enjoy a little fun day. Weather freak is nice. It's like, 48 degrees right now so we're gonna try to catch a fishy if we can huh Jake <laughs> he's wearing his comfy PJs and extra tough boots because that's what he likes <laughs> and I ain't arguing but anyway if we catch a fish y'all I'll kick the phone back on see what we can do so stay tuned all right y'all out gardening doing the uh, raised beds let's see these are the tires that we worked on in the last video i put out uh yes i have changed hats because it is bright out day gummit and besides that every proper man of the woods should have a wide brim hat, hat. so i'm just saying so anyway all right so let's get to the matter at hand so anyway i got all my tires you can see 16 of them if i counted right <laughs> and uh let me show let me flip this camera around it's just easier to do this that way yeah, y'all can see it better. All right. So here's all my land minefield, landfill, I guess, same thing, the tires. And now these ones I'm filling up. So I'm filling these. I'm going to fill these, I don't know, about four inches deep. I'm going to fill these up with dirt. And then I'll show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to do this technique called uh, lasagna garden, gardening. So I'm going to stack some uh, organic materials mainly some old hay that I have and that I know it's not been sprayed or none of that and some birch wood chips that I'll show you here in a second so yeah let me show you I'm gonna kind of step by step kind of show you what I'm doing dumping it in and spreading it out and whatnot and I'll bring in and out so hold tight all right y'all so when I tell you this is a fun bonus <laughs> when I say it's still too cold to plant this is what I mean so most of the snow's gone here. There's a little bit in the wood, like in, mainly in the woods or around and stuff that's always shady for the most part. But I was just picking up some old hay that I've gotten. Because these are under my rabbit hutches. Their manure's mostly right there. And then over here is just some hay that's gotten away from me that whatever. And uh, I was picking it up and I hit something hard. I'm like, what is this? I'm like, good. And when I finally moved the hay over, it's like, oh yeah, a chunk of ice. Like I'm saying, so... Y'all, the ground is like, I mean, it's insanely cold. That's why the raised beds here work very well. They get you kind of a little bit of the head to the game because the, they'll uh, they'll thaw out faster. But this is what I'm talking about. So it's still it's still too cold to really, especially put anything in the immediate ground. Uh, like I say, so I'm holding out for some stuff like my potatoes. Uh, hopefully in a week or two. All right, Ellis, you good? All right. Anyway. Take on rooster. <laughs> uh, but hope, hopefully, like say in about two weeks, our lows will stay in like middle 40s, hopefully. And then I'm going to I'm gonna put them in, hopefully. So anyway, let me pick you. I'll pick you all back up when I get back over here doing what I'm doing. Okay, y'all. So I got you set up. I think you shouldn't fall over. So hope you're comfortable. <laughs> Uh, so this is what I'm just going to show you the steps that I'm doing because I am not a professional Any way shape or form and like I say I this isn't how I not a how-to because if you start saying how-to then you sound like a professional in my end At least to me And I'm gonna be labeled that so anyway, I got a bunch of old hay like so this is from last year's cutting And this is like this stuff and we're only got gloves on it's got briars in it We have rose hips similar to briars down south and all kind of manner of weeds and whatnot in it um that i'm hoping that i'm going to through this process smother down to where they don't come up i mean if they do 
I'll knock them out while they come through and that way eventually they'll they'll go away um, but I'm trying to get this the, the dirt into soil because the dirt I have is dirt and it's sandy silt from the river um, uh, it's just from you know years and years and years uh, it's, it's not good for uh, I've did a uh, test on it one was you know um, rapid test I should have brought it out here those little rapid tests that you can test your your MPK and your pH and stuff and pretty much what I thought it was from other gardeners up here that um, pretty lacking in a lot of stuff it's all the way across the board um, and I've grown in this last year and I found that out that the soil needs a lot of dirt needs a lot of stuff to become soil so what I'm trying to do at least in these beds I can't do this everywhere but in these beds and a couple other ones I'm able to I'm gonna really try to baby them I guess you could say and build the soil and build it into a soil so when this breaks down and the birch birch chips break down um over in like a year or two hopefully uh this will be like a you know what you would get you know when a nice fancy gardener place whatever so where it's like oh yeah you know the stuff you're like oh it smells good that's the stuff i'm going for at least here like i said i'm not gonna be able to do that as fast and everything when i'm trying to do the potatoes and do certain things like that because i'm trying to do hundreds i mean i mean ideally if i could get four to six hundred pounds potatoes that's what i'm shooting for um, so that kind of thing, I probably not, I can't do this. So anyway, I'm going to show you. So like what I've done, I've just dumped a bunch of hay in here. I'm just going to spread it out and around. You know, just trying to do a base layer. Like I said, this is some old stuff, y'all. That way, hopefully there's not a lot of seed. My luck, there probably will be seed in here. So like I say, I'm not too worried about it. I'll just cut it out with a hoe. Um, that's need be when it starts coming out because I'm not going to overload these either. I might do five or six plants per one of these. Um, that way they don't, they're not all fighting for the same uh, nutrition and stuff. So, like I said, once I've kind of spread all this out, kind of patted it down, I got about that thick a layer of this old hay. And then what I got here, which is really cool, this is, if you're going to see it, I'll thin the, all of this birch chips or shavings are like that. They're paper thin. Which is cool because this came from a, uh, a bowl company that makes birch bowls up here in Fairbanks or in Fairbanks. I live in North Pole, but in Fairbanks, and uh, every year they'll dump all their stuff from over, from over winter when they go to sell uh, their bowls and stuff for the tourism season and everything. So anyway, they give these away, um, and this is just great because this should break down relatively quickly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a whole bunch over here. On top of this to one kind of help blot out anything that wants to come up through from the hay and uh, two is just another layer like I said I'm trying to build uh, layers and and hopefully like I say it'll all combine with like next year I'll come in here and start stirring it up to where I have a soil instead of a dirt so anyway let me let me, let me do that real quick and I'll kick y'all back on when I got the birch chips laid in All right, y'all. So I just chunked a bunch in here. No, no rhyme or reason. It doesn't matter. Ain't gotta be fancy. And I say the same thing. I'm gonna spread this out. Just try to cover up the hay, and another layer like lasagna, and uh, hence the name. And by the way, I have definitely didn't come up with that lasagna technique. There's some fancy smancy people with way more intelligence than me that did. And the person that I learned this from. Or seen this from is survival gardening with David the Good which if you don't know who that is highly recommend you check him out guy knows his stuff um, and uh, I'm doing kind of a mod modified version of what he's doing he's doing I think he did a video uh, last video or two ago he did a call about lasagna gardening um, it makes a lot of sense it's similar to like what you're trying to recreate basically what nature does um, you know, like, you know, when I lived in Alabama, we had a lot of red clay and the soil was terrible, the subsoil was. But on the top layer, you know, you had about a, depending, three to six inch of this pretty black stuff. And all that was is just years and years of decayed leaves and whatever fold foliage that's been broken down. A little bit of dust and stuff, you know, the wind and stuff would blow dirt over it and year over year. And then you get this really nice layer, like down there that, um, you know that's what the plants really want to grow in that's where your nutrition is coming from what you're kind of in my mind you're recreating that you know we're, we're layering 
leaves. If I had leaves, I would throw a bunch of dead leaves in here. You know, people, um, probably where you live, you can get leaves in bags from people. Um, I would use leaves if you couldn't get chips or whatever, or hay, or whatever, you know, because hay costs a little bit of money. Um, I just use leaves, you know, whatever, any kind of organic material that you can add to it. And like I say, over, over time will help just doing what nature does. You know, you're essentially doing that um, and trying to speed it up, obviously, a little bit. But uh, yeah, so anyway, like I say, I'm just working this around. And, you know, like I say, I'm going to kind of pat it down into that hay. The way it was, like I say, it's going to be kind of blotting it out. And I just want it to rot under what I'm going to grow on this year. This really isn't going to do anything in my mind for this year's gardening. Hopefully next year's gardening, this will um, be broken down enough. Hopefully. Like I say, because living in Alaska, our growing season is, let's say, June, July, August. Four months. Tops. That's it. And it just takes, you know, then you're getting back into really cold, cold, and stuff's not going to break down as fast because it's so cold. And then it just turns into ice because everything freezes the ground everything um so like i'm gonna build a compost pile here pretty soon um that compost pile from all my chicken manure and also all this kind of stuff it's not gonna be good for maybe next year i if i'm lucky it might be you know like say because it's gonna freeze solid for six months so for me it's just um you know you, you're having to look out two years you know this might be two years before this is remotely broke down you know what i mean uh, so it might not be next year. The next year is when all this really will be start paying off. So um, we'll see. So anyway, let me uh, like I say I got let me do this. I'm gonna do all these these few four. I'm I'm just gonna do like four at a time. I'm not doing all of them. I mean I'm gonna do all of them, but I'm gonna do four pretty much completely, and then I'll do another four, another four. So I'll bring y'all back out when I'm uh, ready to do next step. Thanks. I Okay, y'all. So, bringing you back to the next steps, I guess you'd say. So you see, I've put another, I don't wanna show you all this, cause this video's probably gonna be eons long. But uh, I got, well, you can't see from over. But I got three inches-ish of dirt over the birch that I put in. That's over top of the hay. And this is the, minus the dirt, is the next and the last step for me, pretty much, uh, is my, this is all my rabbit maneuver, manure. Uh, like I say, over the winter, it builds up into a huge pile, so I'm fortunate to have a pretty good bit. Uh, this is going to deplete probably a chunk of it, if not all of it. But, um, so if you can't, like I say, if you can get some rabbit manure from somebody you know, or cow manure, make sure it's not been sprayed with nothing, or, you know, cows aren't eating hay that's been sprayed with stuff um if you can use manure that's great uh this is i guess this is the part in the video that i'm going to go on a tangent um a little rant okay so bear with me um we're gonna have a come to jesus moment meeting moment if you want to you know down south we call what at least what i've always grown up calling it is just do what you can do okay there's going to be so many gardening channels and just people that garden in general that claim that this is the best, greatest, latest way to do whatever. If you can, great. If you can't, do it however you want to do it. Um, if you want to use manure, go for it. If you want to do it like this, go for it. If you don't, don't do it. I'm not saying this is the best method because it's probably not the best method. I'm sure that somebody's going to argue with the fact with me and good on them. Uh, but the biggest problem I've seen, I want to say a problem, is the stereotypical um, people that will get on and criticize somebody else for how they garden. Uh, that crap really needs to stop, in my opinion, or don't take whatever they say with a grain of salt, because everybody's in a different position in their, you know, growing, I guess, whatever gardenings that they are in. You know, people are going to say you need to do back to eating, you need to do permaculture, you need to do her hugel culture, and all these other things. Lasagna gardening, okay? Pick, do whatever you want, mix them all up, pick what you want, use fertilize. If you don't if you don't have this, and I like I have synthetic fertilizer, I'm gonna use synthetic fertilizer because I want to grow food. I'm not growing hopes and dreams and some fantasy world that I can turn this garbage 
into something overnight. This, this is not happening. Um, this, these particular beds, I think I'll be able to get away with not doing any synthetic fertilizer, but I still might do some because, like I said, my potassium and pho and uh, phosphorus is uber uber low, it, practically none. And I still might put some synthetic fertilizer in these just so I can grow good food, good crops. Um, if you don't like it, I really don't care. I'll be honest with you because I'm so sick of seeing the people that want to argue the fact that this is the greatest method and blah, blah, blah. And I only use the Bacteetus method. You know, if you do, great. But the ones that are like, you know, force feeding it down your throat and you are, I am more holier than thou because I use Bacteetus. Good for you. But, you know, everybody's in a different spot in their life of growing food if you if you're trying to grow good on you and that's awesome you just should try to grow food like I say i'm not in the position i don't have any compost i don't have, i'm gonna build a compost but it's gonna take probably the better part of two years before i'll be able to use my compost pile uh, because of freezing in my climate so i'm gonna have to use synthetic fertilizer uh, to get an actual decent amount of return on what i plant i've stocked up for fertilized before the price got buku crazy and I've got a few years worth of fertilize before um, I'm really going to need to rely heavily on organic style uh, methods. It's very important, I think, to try to work towards a sustainable gardening method. I'm not arguing that. But right out of the gate, if you're just trying to get food, because that's what we should be doing. All this fighting and bickering, it should be about just grow food. Just That's all we need to worry about. Is however you can do it, grow food. Okay, you need to learn how to do it now while you have the chance to learn now and you don't really need it. Then down the road when you do need to know how to do it and you're trying to figure out what works and what doesn't. In my humble and uneducated opinion, by the way. So that's why I'm doing Well, one reason I'm doing it is I want to know how to plant. Um, even like I did it last year here. Last year, last year was my first year growing in Alaska. Um, this year I'm hitting it 20 times harder. Um, because I feel like it's going to come down here in the year or two to we really need to know how to grow food. And this every climate's unique to everybody. Um, my climate's not the same as somebody back in Alabama where I'm from. So just learn how to grow food, even if we're prepped and stocked up to the roof. In my humble and uneducated opinion, it's good to know how to grow food in your area and practice it. Because I don't want to eat off of my preps. 24 7 i would like to get some fresh food and fruits and veggies in to prevent food fatigue to supplement my preps that i've put up uh, like I say it just i don't know how many people i've read they got in food fatigue eating their preps after a week you know what i mean um and i can see that it would be easily to get food fatigue where you're just sick of eating the same 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 so at least trying to do this um and and trying to grow it however you can grow and putting it up now for harder times later and learn how to do it it's just to me it's, it's super important so anyway that's my my rant i want to say because i just so many channels that i've seen and i like say i'm not gonna name any names but it's just we should all just try to grow food work together however you want to do it do it um but don't take nobody's word to to the bank and say that it's prophecy okay and just do how you want to do it you do you okay so this is just how me like I say, this is how I, not a how to. So anyway, now back to garden. So anyway, I'm gonna spread this out. And you see, I got a lot of hay in here. That's hindsight now. I know what I'm gonna do next year. I was just putting their hay in their cage, in their in their cages. But it, a lot of times it would fall through and stuff. And this is why I got all this kind of hay in here. So next year, what I know to do now is I'm putting this in their nesting box with them so that nesting box will hold this and they'll either eat it or they'll just be matted down for floor for like a bedding so that way I'm not getting it all in my manure under their cages but what I'll do what I've been doing is let's say I'm breaking it up and then I'll kind of run my fingers through it and you kind of do like that and I've noticed just from running it back and forth I can kind of pick out the bigger chunks of hay and like I say, just the bigger stuff. That way, hopefully, I'm not getting too many weeds. I know I'm going to get some for sure, but prevent some. And then all this, I'm not going to throw. This is going to go in my compost with the chicken manure that I've gotten from over winter. So, like I say, and then I, this, 
I'm gonna try to work into my soil some. Well, it's just like nice, just ultra, whew, <laughs> good for you stuff. Put hair on your chest, as my dad would say. But I'm gonna work this in the soil, dirt, because it ain't soil yet. I'm gonna rephrase that. Work this in, you know, kind of like a tiller in a way. And spread it out, and then I'll kind of rake it out and around. And then this will be done basically until I'm ready to plant. Just a little more of that out of there. And that's it. That way, I got a good, hopefully about an inch ish layer of this manure that's mixed in. Um, like I say, rabbit. I love having the rabbits. This is one of the, I mean, minus eating them, this is like super close second to having this, their manure, I mean, right next, you know, in my yard and be able to use it wherever I want. Um, so, yeah, this is all I'm doing. Like I was saying, if, if you can't, do whatever you can. Like, say, if I had dead leaves, I'd use dead leaves and uh, whatever you can find. You know, I mean, you surprise what people, like say, you set off on the end of the road, you normally get leaves. Like, I know in Alabama, you know, there's so many people that want pristine yards, which is more power to them. And they'd have leaves galore. So I'd use a ton of leaves and, you know, keeping it cheap. Uh, trying to keep it on a cheaper uh, budget. You know what I mean? So, so anyway, y'all, uh, this is pretty much it. This is how I'm going to fill my, do all these here. Like I said, I'm just going to, one at a time, keep knocking them out. Uh, I don't want to make this video longer than it probably already is. So thank you for staying with me, listening on my rant. I hope I made sense. Um, got my point across per se. I want to come off like a you know what, but I just think everybody needs to come together. We're all on the same team, far as you know, they're all trying to grow food. Um, so let's just you know, the bickering crap needs to stop. And who's the best method? Blah blah blah. Just do what you can for yourself. So, um, anyway, hope y'all got something out of this. Y'all take care. God bless. The end.